Hello, friend. Welcome to the Happy Family Club. We're delighted to have you join us. Our mission is to help you have a happier, stronger family. We do that by bringing you the world's greatest experts in family, marriage, parenting, and relationships. We interview them to discover their secrets, their strategies, their techniques, and bring them to you so that you can cherry pick exactly what you need right now to have more success and more joy in your family. And if you enjoyed this interview, we encourage you to share it with your friends and your family and come on to the happyfamilyclub.com and see if you can find more information that's going to help you and your family be happier. Again, thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the interview. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Happy Family Club podcast. We are delighted to have you here today. And we have with us a guest that probably a lot of you are already familiar with. He has uh, written over 30 books. He's got one book that we're going to talk about that's sold over a million copies and just has been had years of touching lives, you know, lifting people up, pointing people to God, doing incredible stuff. So we'd love to welcome you, John, Dr. John Trenton. Just thank you so much for being on this show with us. We really appreciate it. Hey, it's an honor. Are you kidding? And uh, get to look at uh, Arkansas behind you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to see at least one possum, you know, go by. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, uh, TCU, where I went to school, uh, and Texas Tech were playing last week, and a possum actually ran, a wild possum wasn't let go right. on purpose, but the only time I've ever seen a possum in, in the wild is is in Arkansas, so there's yeah, got to well. be, be some behind you there somewhere. Come, come on over. We, we, we've caught, we've tried to catch some uh, raccoons. raccoons that are eating up our grass, and yeah. we got possum possum instead. instead. So. We'll oh, have no. some well, and cue, yeah. cue, the, cue the deer. That looks cue so cool deer. back cue there. The possum, so. Yeah. So, uh, that'd be great. So Margie, you want to tell just a little bit more about John and then we'll jump in. He's the president of Strong Families Mm -hmm. Organization, and uh, he's just really committed to strengthening family relationships, which is what we're all about. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. He's been a conference speaker, spoken all over, and best-selling author, like Joshua said. He's also got um, several degrees, Master of Theology, Dallas Theological Seminary, and a PhD in Marriage and Family Counseling. And he and his wife, Cindy, have two daughters. And one, is it Carrie that works with you? Yeah. 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 We have two awesome daughters. One's a nurse practitioner. And uh, we have two two grandkids with her, with her and then uh, her and her husband. And then uh, Carrie have two uh, precious sons and Carrie, Carrie works with me. And, and, uh, so yeah, we're, we're, we're really blessed. We're like you guys, you know, just have, uh, uh, kids and grandkids and the whole deal. And just excited to get to work with families all over the country and world to do a lot with the military. So I'm on a lot of bases all over. <laughs> That's amazing. John, I read a quote on your website, uh, you saying, without a doubt, I have the best job in the world, and I want to. I want to debate you on that because I think I'm the one with the best job. <laughs> well, I mean, how how can you say that with eleven kids and all the all the challenges and and uh, uh, but man, I, I you know you're absolutely right. I, I think you guys are doing a ton to help uh, help people and lift up hearts and and boy, do we ever need it? I mean, if you just went by headlines today. Uh, or all the challenges, uh, you know, you'd be going, well, why talk about happiness? But, right. but I'm telling you, uh, what really brings that is that commitment. And uh, it's not always easy. And, you know, yeah. and sometimes life is, you know, sometimes you're about as happy as your saddest kid, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but, but I do think uh, for a lot of us, uh, boy, you know, we need to grab hold of those things that are going to really encourage us. So yeah. no, it's great to get to be with you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. So maybe we can start out. I'd love to hear a little bit more about your background, John, and just how how you got here. Because again, like you said, you're working with military people. You've spoken at who knows how many conferences. You've <laughs> blessed untold millions of lives. But how did you get to this spot? Where are you at right now? Yeah, well... Um, you know, I, I grew up uh, in Arizona, 
And um, actually, we went to rival high schools. Your bride, <laughs> your bride and I went to rival high schools. And uh, at the time, now we're not in the same league, but we used to be, used uh, to be used yeah. to, uh, uh, play there. But um, but I grew up in a single parent home. So uh, my mom and dad uh, divorced when I was two months old. So I never met my dad till I was in high school. When I did meet him, uh, it was right at the end of high school. And he was an angry alcoholic. And I used to hate my dad and, and then it became a Christian and I just intensely disliked him. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> just kinda, you know, and then I began to realize, well, I don't even know this guy and I'm becoming just like him. And so what I had to do is make some choices and thank goodness. Uh, there were some, um, awesome people. Have you ever heard of young life works with kids like me that were incorrigible and yeah. it's a group that works with high school kids. And there was a big six foot four ex Chico state offensive tackle that just, came into our family's life and changed everything for us. And um, so that's really, you know, my twin brother, I have a twin brother. So if you ever see me doing something wrong, it's Jeff. Okay? It's Jeff. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but Jeff, um, uh, he's a cancer doctor. My mom was real sick. So when we were growing up, dad bails out. Mom is a rheumatoid arthritic. And this is before all the new RA drugs and right. she's, has multiple surgeries and she's gone through almost all of high school. We were raising ourselves, uh, ourselves today, you know, you'd be arrested, but back then it's just the way it was. Right. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, um, but you know, Jeff is a cancer doctor to, uh, working on alleviating pain. And then I work with couples and families and that's kind of what, what I, uh, try to do, uh, uh, is, you know, alleviate, you know, pain and just help them realize they really can, even in this crazy world, they really can have a, a strong family. Yeah. So, um, so that, that's it, you know, yeah. Married for 40, almost 45 years and, uh, precious, uh, you know, a precious, awesome, wonderful wife. And, uh, uh, and then again, a couple, couple of kids and just, just, uh, that that's the biggest thing, you know, if it doesn't work at home, don't export it, you know? Right. <laughs> there you go. I, I love that. You know what else I love is that John, you took the, what some would see as a, as a, tr just a tragic upbringing and, and, you know, maybe you want to point out all these things about, you know, how horrible it was. And, and, you know, I don't know the journey you went through, but eventually you came out and you and your brother both said, you know what? let's use this as a way to bless other people's lives. I just think that is so incredible. And it's, well, you know, I mean, again, um, we certainly didn't do it out of context. You know, my older brother's a great guy too. Um, yeah. uh, went into heavy equipment and, and, but in a, a, just a great, uh, you know, just a great guy, great, the world, you know, kind of like uncle buck, you know, the big guy, <laughs> it's three, three in the morning, your car breaks down and you call Joe, you know, my older yeah. brother. Uh, but you know, I had the world's greatest mom. Everybody's mom's the best mom, right? yeah. you know, out there. But um, she she was sick a lot and had to be. Unfortunately, she'd go back to Indiana for all these surgeries where we had family. So, um, but uh, but she did a great job of encouraging us. Uh, and and you know, I was a mess. Now my twin brother is really smart. We're fraternal. I can brag on him. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> You know, but I was kicked out of grade school. I was that angry uh, kid in high school, which actually helps in athletics, uh, <laughs> but it 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 doesn't help you in relationships. And um, but I really did had to have a really did have to make a choice. And you know, it's interesting. There's this verse in the Old Testament, and it says, uh, uh, "I set before you," the Lord says, "a choice: mm -hmm. life or death, the blessing or the curse." Mm -hmm. So choose life and life means movement, you know, and man, I was stuck for a long time with anger and all tied up in knots. Um, and uh, it, it's interesting that word for forgiveness literally means to untie the knots. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had to do that. I had to, you know, it was a choice, you know, are you going to choose life? That means, you know, move, you're going to get moving or death. That literally means to step away. Uh, uh, or, 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 and are you going to bless, which means to add, okay, yeah. like adding a coin to a scale, you know, um, or are you going to curse? And the word curse, it's interesting, means to dam up the stream. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, that's when somebody could have 
reached out to you or said something and they didn't. Uh, and so, you know, they're choose it's a choice. So yeah. you kind of have to make that choice, but, but boy, uh, uh, you know, it was, uh, just a, you know, tremendous blessing, you know, to realize I didn't have to do that alone, uh, yeah. with faith, you know, you, you, you know, you don't have to walk it out alone. And then also, man, you can learn something about, about relationships and, for example, even if you never got the blessing that we'll get to talk about today, you can give it to somebody else, even if you never got it. And yeah. and so oh. you really can reverse the curse, get moving. And, um, uh, but it, but it's a choice. It's a, it's a choice we make. It is. And what's amazing is the, uh, that, that choice tends to propagate into the future. I mean, look at, look at the family you've created 40 years of marriage and two beautiful children <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it, I, I think that choice, no, I want to ask a follow-up question. This isn't really, I, I do want to get to the, the, the blessing and some other stuff, but a follow-up question on this is it's interesting to me that you had the choice and all of us, I think, I think God puts the choice in front of all of us. Right? Yeah. It's always there. Yeah. And, and there was something that allowed you to choose a path to follow God and to turn things into a blessing. And I wonder if you could just address that a little bit because I, I guarantee you there's going to be somebody listening to this who's standing on that fork in the road right now yeah and and and, and could use some encouragement moving down a path of blessing as opposed to a path of curse and so what what caused you to move down that road and gave you the courage to do so well you know um i'll, I'll go back you know again uh uh my you know my mom when she was there was just beyond ridiculously good at, um, at, at, at really at blessing, encouraging, yeah. uh, she used to, you know, so single parent mom, this is Arizona. She's yeah. driving an old Ford Falcon, which yeah. are terrible cars. And maybe remembers them. They used to blow up with the pintos, I think. And so, yep. <laughs> um, but, uh, but she would drive home, no air conditioning, you know, three on the tree stick shift even though she was an arthritic and had a hard time shifting. And so she'd pull into the driveway. And so here would be these three kids, you know, that would come piling out my older brother and my twin brother and I, and I'm telling you every time, every time we ran out there, she would look at you. I'm telling you just the way she looked at you was like, Oh my gosh, here are the three best kids in the world. And I think probably what she was doing was pulling the car over, you know, for 10 minutes before she got home and just saying, you know, uh, de decompressing or something. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what I mean? But, but it's that, it's that, so I, it's not like I, I think a lot of people grow up. I, I'm telling you every kid in every home deserves to have at least one person in their life. That's crazy about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Uh, do you remember the name Chuck Colson? Uh, he used to have a, a prison ministry, you know, Chuck. Yeah. And actually, he was in prison for a while, and then his life changed and in prison while he was in prison. But um, Chuck used to say about people in prison, uh, man, you, you need two things. You need, you know, the Lord, and then you need one friend when you get out. You need yeah. one person that really believes you can do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what I'm getting at, is I was very fortunate to... Uh, at least have that one person that was crazy about me. And then that makes the choices easier. But I, I made a bunch of really bad ones. Initially. <laughs> but then uh, again, once I realized, hey, there is another, there is another road. Yeah. Uh, now my twin brother, the smart one, he figured it out really quick. I got us kicked out of fifth grade. <laughs> so we were in and my mom had given up at one point because I was so incorrigible. She put us in a parochial school. Oh, that'll yeah. shape them up, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't have any faith at that point, at that point, but you know, oh, it's a parochial school. So we, anyway, I got Jeff and we we stole the chocolate milk machine. The whole machine off campus. Well, it was a small, <laughs> small Christian school, and they had a milk machine with kind of a slanted lean, a metal deal, not real huge. So we rolled it off campus, ate all, you know, drank all the chocolate milk and threw away all the crummy stuff, you know. And then the next day we realized, you know, there's no milk machine. Right. You know? So, so I, I rolled it back on campus and told him I found it. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know that worked. You can tell that, that worked, worked great, I'm sure. It was a milk breath or something. You know? Right. <laughs> so I get Jeff and I both kicked out of grade school. So that's the only blemish on his, uh, yeah. uh, you know, but you begin to realize, okay, this isn't working really yeah. well, you know? Yeah. And um, so I hope everybody there, you know, realizes, man, there really is a way to turn around from, from some of that and you can make a choice, but you, you know, it helps to see it. Yes. When I met that Doug Barham is the guy, the young life leader um, that was the old football player, but that uh, it wasn't old at the time, but uh, you know, it, you know, it's so important to have people that uh, who's somebody that's doing it. You know, yeah. people are watching you guys and think, you know, going, well, you know what? Okay. I can do it. You know, somebody else, you know, it's, it's real. It's, it's not, nobody's perfect. Yeah. Your kids aren't perfect. Our kids aren't perfect. Uh, our marriage isn't perfect, but I'm telling you, you know, you, you, we have that choice, life over death, blessing over curse. Yeah. And, um, and you just got to choose life and, and that's where it really begins. Yeah. yeah. So beautiful. It's awesome. Oh, well, great. I want to dive some more into the choice and then the, the kinds of choices that you make after that. So yeah, maybe, maybe we can start that conversation just by us throwing out the question of what do you think is a core principle that creates happy families? And again, I'm quick to point out, Margie and I never talk about happiness in the terms of just pleasure or fleeting, you know, kicks or thrills. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about real, eternal, lasting, like, godly joy and happiness that just yeah. just tickles you down to the bone and makes you want to crawl out of your skin and run around with joy you know so that yeah. that kind of fun stuff the kind of stuff i see on your face when you talk about your wife and your <laughs> mom and you're and still in the chocolate machine right so yeah. Um, yeah so so what do you think is a principle that that really brings that into a family well um you know it's really interesting uh i i you know i um I'm, I'm really old. And back, you know, when I was in school, uh, they, it had just come out, but, but today it's everywhere. And are you familiar with attachment theory? Mm, so yeah. kind of the flavor of the month today and Sue Johnson with EFT, I'm a marriage and family uh, counselor is my day job. And emotionally focused therapy is all about attachment in business there that's it's it's you know now it's boy how do we build attachment well what in the world is attachment you know well so much of what what happens is is um when when you really feel like now remember i told the story about my mom running out to or i we were running out to you know the yeah. car would stop mom would get out and man we were running to tackle her and and but how she looked at us. Okay. So I have a friend, um, a guy named Jim Wilder, who would be great for you guys to interview, but he's written a great, he's a neuro, uh, scientist. He's a brain scientist at a UCLA and, um, has written a lot about, uh, things, but what he, what he says that I just love, um, is in, in their studies of brain research. Think about this. Love moves at the speed of joy. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now that's happy. That, but joy is really what you're talking about. That kind of happiness. Yes. When somebody, when my mom would look at us like, oh my gosh, look at these great kids. And we were not great. We were <laughs> rambun rambunctious uh, boys and just, you know, all this stuff. But, but, but boy, and it's interesting. I mean, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, in your face, in your presence, Lord, is fullness of joy. It's yeah. literally in your face. Is what yeah. it says. And so there's that sense in which, man, when we get the idea that, you know, God's looking at me like I'm valuable, that somebody else is. And I think part of that, what that joy is, um, is, is, uh, is really based around uh, that deep need we have for for attachment. For mm. uh, It's interesting, this great, you know, theologian, he was actually... Uh, English professor C.S. Lewis, you know, talks about in a in a uh, book he did called The Weight of Glory. Yeah. Um, he said, all of us, he goes, you know, here, here then is the secret. He goes, is all of us for all our lives, it's like we've knocked on this door and waited for the door to open and to to be welcomed, to be beckoned in. Now, 
I mean, think about that. Uh, there's a lot mm-hmm. of us out there, man, we didn't get chosen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe our parents didn't choose to care for us. They were busy. They didn't know how important it was to provide any kind of attachment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, they're like my dad and he was so, he was an old third Marine division guy that, you know, came back from the war, hating God, man, and God bless him. And, and we're so grateful for his service, but the war really ruined him. Okay. And a lot of people, not just him, but a lot of, uh, but, but which is why he bailed out and all that stuff. Uh, But, um, but what I'm getting at is, man, there is that incredible need that we have Um, but, but when it, when it, when people do that, when you experience it, or when you make the choice to, to do that, uh, happiness really, you know, love moves at the speed of joy and, and, uh, and really where you see that is in, it starts is with the person's eyes, you know, how do they, how do they look at you? So that's a good starting point, you know, right there, you know, Mm -hmm. just to say, guy, you want to light up your home? Here's a cool study. University of Michigan did a study in their library. I'm sorry, Purdue University. Don't don't send me emails. Uh, Purdue U- University. Uh, uh, Purdue U- University did a study on their at their library. So here's what they would do: is um, now this is back when you had to go into a library. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's a few few years old. Uh, so it's not just online, but people would walk in. You remember library cards? Yes. Okay, so they'd take your library card, check out your book. They'd hand it back with you. Now, with half of the people, when they would hold on to the card. So you're holding the can in the card back, but you're holding it, right? Okay. So what does that make you do? I mean, you know, you're not really looking at somebody, but now, so they would turn and look at them. When they turned at them, look, watch where they go. Ah. They would just <laughs> brighten their eyes. Okay. Such in Proverbs, you know, bright eyes makes the heart glad. Yep. And they just brighten their eyes. And then they'd let go. And then they'd walk, when they walked outside, there were these, you know, hey, what do you think? There were people, they were Confederates, they were part of the study, but they sure. were, hey, tell me, tell me what you think about the Purdue Library. The yeah. People that, and now all, they had just, somebody had smiled at them. They would, you know, had touched these, you know what I mean? That kind of a thing. And, and they go, oh, it's, it's really good. It was just <laughs> great. You know, and, and so we think it's these big things. Okay, man, you know, the blessing is five little things, Mm -hmm. small things, but boy, you add them together. And so to me, right at the heart of joy and happiness is attachment. Mm -hmm. And and it just begins with these small things like, you know, looking at somebody. And that doesn't mean you're not going to have hard days. And my mom, there were times with the pain, she was a rheumatoid arthritic and She'd cry or so we'd go in there. I remember seven or eight years old, you know, and she'd be crying and you'd go into her room at night and she was asleep, but she was still crying. Mm -hmm. And so now as a kid, you're having trouble processing, you know, uh, you know, you can't do anything to help, you know, but she was very real. You know, she wasn't, it wasn't Pollyanna, but I'm telling you, she made the choice, even when it was tough to, Hey, I'm going to lean into that. And we, every element of the blessing we got from my mom, you know, so I, I started right there, you know, just that one person that that's crazy about you. Yeah. So if you haven't, it, I want to get into the five elements because that sounds super fascinating to me. Um, yeah. especially since it's little stuff and I like little stuff cause I have a little brain and so I can do little. Yeah. Stuff, right? It's like, yeah. like we all can. <laughs> that, that's really helpful yeah. for me. Right. Um, yeah. So, but, but you know, you had a you had a mom who just chose to just give you the bright eyes and love you and, and had the attachment there, um, you know. And there's some people who don't. And I and I wonder about you know the the impact of deciding to be that person and does that kind of help fill that void if you don't have that person in your life? And I wonder yeah. if your insights on that. Oh no, that's brilliant because um, you know for for so many of us. Uh, you know, what we don't realize is that, you know, like, um, well, there was this guy, Eugene Peterson, he has a great version of the Bible called the message version. And he goes, uh, there's one passage where he says, first Peter, you know, the blessing, that's your job. Mm -hmm. You're to get a blessing and then give it. it. And so what I'm getting at is I think for a lot of us, 
And for me, it really did because mom was gone so much when I, you know, uh, she, I certainly had that foundation with her, but then just realizing, you know, Hey, there's this guy, Jesus guy, that's crazy about me and I don't have to do life alone. Yeah. You know? And, and it's when you realize that, okay, you don't have to do life alone. You can really begin to make those choices yeah. to, to do. And when you do choose, it's kind of like it rebounds, you know, it really yeah. is a, um, you know, uh, a, a powerful way to um, really turn things around, you yeah. know? So, yeah. So what we're asking people to do is, it's not just going to help that kid or that grandkid or the neighbor kid, or, you know, if you're a coach, uh, let me tell you, there's a lot of people. The first time I really ever, there was a, I, I had a coach in high school that had been at, uh, he was an army ranger during the Korean war at a place mm -hmm. called, uh, pork chop Hill, which, uh, you, nobody's ever heard of except watch the movie with Gary, uh, Cooper called Pork Chop Hill. It won an Academy Award, and but it was a bunch of Rangers that were cut off and, and uh, lived uh, through it amazingly. And he was one of the few that did. Wow! So tough as all get out. And I remember, you know, showing up is you know junior year, and and every time I would cuss, I'd have to do a lap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and back back then, I wasn't. I had no moral. Yeah, about anything hardly, and uh, but he kept. I mean, I just got sick of running laps, you know. <laughs> and I remember him asking him one time, I go, Well, look, what, what do you really care, coach? Yeah. I mean, come, come on, I mean, I'll, I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll go to you know, and, and, and I didn't know he was a Christian, I didn't know he had you know, this, you know, but he puts his hand on and he goes, Look, you know, this isn't just about sports, you know, this isn't this is about who you're going to be, and you got to start making some choices right now. Well, let me tell you, I um, he was by far the, uh, you know, until I met Doug Barham, you know, nobody impacted my life, never used a verse, never used any, I didn't know anything where he was faith wise, uh, until much later. Um, but I think, you know, we need those people in our life that can really call us to be more than we think we can be. Yes. Okay. And he was really the first one in my team because Jeff heard that all the time. My smart brother, you know, I must have heard a thousand times. Why can't you be like Jeff from, from <laughs> these other teachers? And they go, I don't want to be like Jeff. And I yeah. couldn't be, I couldn't be like him is what it was. Yeah. Um, but, but here was somebody looking at you and thinking you could be more than you could be. So, yeah. so we don't realize how much that makes a difference, you know? And, and again, that's part of the whole blessing thing. Huge blessing. I love it. You know, I am. Um, it reminds me, you know, my parents divorced when I was pretty uh, young. In fact, they divorced and married each other and then divorced again. So I went through two yeah. divorces with the same parents. It was, yeah. it was great. A lot of fun. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, um, when I was 19, I guess I was 20 then, I, I was in the Netherlands as a missionary. And I was sitting by myself in this chapel. And I was just, I wanted to be a great husband. I wanted to be a great dad. Um, I didn't really have a lot of role models, right? right? And and I was praying to the Lord and just saying, "Well, how am I going to do this? Like, I, I I don't even have any example." Yeah. And, and I remember distinctly, you know, feeling the Lord say to me, "Look, He says, if you'll look to me, I'll teach you how to yeah. be a great husband and father." Yeah. And and you know, I see. Uh, you, you know, you mentioned that is like we don't have to do this alone. Yeah. And even if you haven't had that person, by the way, my mom. My mom was similar to yours. She was just an angel. She she tried to yeah. figure out how to raise six kids on her own. <laughs> it was like five boys, uh, oh, one, one girl that was more of a handful than two girls and five boys put together. I mean, it was right. just, it yeah. was crazy. So I so relate to what you're saying. And I really want people to hear like, it, your, your past does not have to be perfect to give or receive a blessing that John's yeah, going to talk to Yeah, about. absolutely. You know, and, and, uh, you know, I, I, it's interesting, you know, Shakespeare has one of his characters in King Lear say he laughs at scars who himself never bore a wound. Yeah. Now, you know, when you go through what you went through, not once, but twice. And, you know, my mom was divorced twice. My dad, we don't even know at least twice. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, but, the, the point that I'm getting at is, is that, uh, okay, 
all of these tough things. It's not that you just, you know, be like Pollyanna and go, oh, it doesn't really hurt. Right. Uh, it absolutely is difficult, but really and truly, man, once you realize, well, can I give you a quick example? Okay. Yes. I changed my attachment. Okay. Yes. Attachment. A picture of attachment. Okay. So, you know, um, we start going to young life, this young life leaders up there ta talking about, you can change the, you know, your life. And he tricks about six of us going to this Billy Graham movie. And, <laughs> and uh, I love, I only got, to, I got to meet Billy Graham twice. What a wonderful guy. Uh, so nobody sent me emails, but it was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. It was about this lady, <laughs> this lady gets sick and dies and it was supposed to be sad. And I'm a high school kid. I'm like, eh, she deserved it. I don't, I don't like the movie. Um, <laughs> but at the end of the movie, this guy gets up and, and, uh, I, I, I'm telling you, Joshua, this guy, he goes, uh, I don't even know all he said. It was an invitation to come and change your life. Okay? Yeah. Right. But he, but all I remember is he goes. Do you want to change the pictures of your life story? Wow. And like you sitting there at that was at 19, you're sitting there yeah. at 19 and going, okay. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I do. Yeah. Uh, and there were six of us that walked down there. And so Doug Barham had a uh, do you remember Gideon Bibles? Those oh, yeah. Bibles oh, yeah. that yeah. Okay. So he had a Bible for each one of us. Now there were seven of us that uh, when, went from the football team, six of us walked down there, you know, so yeah. he gives a Bible to each of us, but he tells me, he goes, Hey, I want you to read this one verse. Uh, I want you to go home tonight and I want you to read it a hundred times. Wow. <laughs> and I'm going, okay. Oh, all right. I'll do it. So I go home, I open it up and he had put, thank goodness, a like a, a little card there. Card. Uh -huh. So I knew where to go. Okay. And it was underlined and it's Hebrews 13, five. It says, for he himself, that's Jesus, has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. So that's one. So I'd go one. And then I go, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Two. Yeah. So, so I go three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. I, I get now, because I'm thinking, I would, now later he told me it was metaphorical, you know, just read it a bunch, but I thought it was literal. <laughs> it took a literal. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm about number 64, 65, and I'm weeping. Yeah. And that's when I realized, oh my gosh. Okay. Dad had bailed out. Mom didn't leave on her own initiative, but you know, she was gone a ton, yeah. you know, by then my older brother's gone. You're just, you know, and, but, but then I realized kind of just like you said, all right, if you're sitting here and you're going, well, I didn't have anybody. Well, yeah, you do. You know, it's just, you gotta, you know, just look up in faith and, and, it's not that everything was perfect or anything else, but I have never been really lonely since that day, you know, yeah. uh, traveling or anywhere else because you realize, oh my gosh, I really, can, I, I can do this. Not my own strength. I don't have to do it all in my own strengths. I mean, I'm sure there's days where you're pulling out your hair, both of you and things yeah. are, you know, not always easy. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, what, what a, what a privilege we get to, to, to say, hey, uh, the, you really can reverse the curse. You really can, you know, make a choice. Absolutely. So tell us a little, thank you, by the way, for that, That's because it's really so beautiful. Good. And and it is it is 100% uh, true. He won't forsake you. We do have that connection. So I, yeah. I, and I love that you went through that and had that experience. So beautiful, so powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, tell us a little bit more about the, the blessing. Cause I, I, I would just love to dive in. You said there were five, you know, yeah. little things that could be done. So maybe we can walk through some of those or all of them. And, uh, yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll do it quick. I'll kind of set it up where I first saw it was, um, so, uh, I, in my doctoral program, I'm working in a psychiatric hospital in Dallas, uh, B.B. Owen Memorial. It, it's today. It's I think it became a Richard Richardson General, and now it's I think it's a Baylor Hospital now. I can't remember, but anyway, uh, it, 24 bed psych unit. Uh, mm -hmm. My first day in the job. Do you have any good first day in the job stories? You know, <laughs> you know. And uh, so my first day is a psych unit. I've never even seen a psychotic patient. Okay, and um, so I go upstairs. It's a 13 hour shift. So nurses relate to that. You know, it's a, you're there oh, yeah. for 12 hours and then you've got to do all your charting. And so it's really a 13 hour shift. 
And um, I walk in and they're showing me around and this guy goes, oh, hey, we need to uh, admit somebody. You can do that. A trained sheep can do that, right? You just have to go downstairs and get, uh, you know, get this person and bring him up, up to the third floor. So I go downstairs. It's this uh, wonderful family and their precious daughter had had a complete uh, break. And so we and, uh, find out they're, you know, believers. I got to pray with them. It was, it was just a regular hospital. It wasn't like, right. uh, but, I, but, you know, they were, you know, hurting. And so uh, then I take her in the, high, in the elevator to the third floor. Well, how, how much eye contact do you make with people usually in the elevator? Um, so yeah. I'm not looking at her when the first punch comes and she breaks my nose, which has already been broken twice, you know, oh. so it, gets, it gets easier when you, when you've done it, yeah, a couple it times. <laughs> but, but, and, but if you've ever broken your nose, you know, you can't see very well. I mean, oh, yeah. your eyes swell up, you're crying, you know, and, and so she has taken me apart. You do, and what they didn't tell me as a new intern is you don't take the violent psychotic patients in the elevator. Right. Third floor. You <laughs> walk them up the stairs, but they forgot to tell me that, you know, right. so, so I'm screaming, she's screaming, the doors open, they restrain her. They have to restrain me because you can't hit her, but you're, she's taking me apart. But, and oh, yeah. so I go in and stuff, stuff in my nose, you know, try to get the bleeding stopped. Cause you're there for, you know, this is like 12 more hours. And I remember walking in to uh, the group room they go, well, go, just go take it easy for a while. And I go in the group room and there's this guy about my age and we get to talking and he's so consoling, you know, and uh, basically he reaches over, hears this story and pats me on the shoulder and goes, you're going to do a great job. Don't worry about it. And his sweater pulls back and his wrists are bandaged. So he was actually a, a patient. Okay. Yeah. But he helped me a lot uh, while, while I was there. Um, but, uh, but we sat there for the next probably four hours because, you know, uh, you know, and, and uh, I got to hear his story and he had tried all his life. So here he is a senior in college and he had just received his first B as in boy, not D as in dog. Wow. Think about that, you know, yeah. and he knew when it, when he, had, he came from a home where if he didn't get straight A's like dad, and this was a non-major PE course, you know, and he goes, he goes, you know, I, so he ends up, he sucked at tennis and gets a B in tennis and uh, went back to his room and tried to take his life. Wow. Oh, no. And and you're thinking, oh, are you kidding? Um, uh, that night, and, you know, I'm trying to process this. That night I read Genesis 27 and there were these two twins, one that gets the blessing and one named Esau that doesn't. doesn't. So when Esau heard the words of his father, that he would never get the blessing. Okay. He cries out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry. And I'm telling you, it was like the scales fell off. Mm. And that's what I thought. I got a name for it. That's what I wanted with, for my dad, mm. you know, was the blessing. What is it? So here's what it is. Five things real quick. Okay. Can I get you to, two to do something just real quick? Just, yes. just shake hand, just take each other's hand each other's hand okay all right now look him in the eye you know kind of thing but but all right but just hold on to each other's hand okay every time a blessing was given guess what there was that appropriate meaningful touch so mm. no fingernails you know or anything yeah. just, just that appropriate touch okay yeah and then you want to say to him so just turn to her real quick this yeah. won't kill you okay what's what's you you're going to use your words the second thing is you're going to say it now, okay. you can write it. You can put it in a text, okay? But what do you say? Well, you say words that attach high value. So mm -hmm. what's one thing that you really appreciate uh, about, about your wife? Oh, well, Margie, you put God first in everything, and I love that. It's very okay. cool. All right. What's, what's something with Joshua, Margie, <laughs> that you... He lo Joshua loves with his whole heart, me and okay. the children. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, and now, uh, and all right, so you can let go of each other's hands. That's fine. Right. But what, what, you know, here, here's the deal. Um, right there are three elements of the blessing. Okay. There's that appropriate touch. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go back to my Jim Wilder neurobiologist friend, you know, on brain things. Turn towards each other again, one more time, look yeah. each other right in the eye. Okay. Now we're not going to take the time to do it. But here's your homework assignment, okay? Is okay. I want you to look at each other in the eye for two minutes. Set your clock for two minutes, 
two whole minutes. You don't have to say anything, but just for two minutes. Okay. So look, turn back, you know, yeah. and, and um, that, I mean, that was like, five seconds five seconds how yeah. long that is Two yeah. minutes. Mm-hmm. a lot of times we don't really see people okay yeah. and and it's it, he said that what that does with a lot of couples is that alone just resets what's going on in their relationship just looking at at looking at them so with our touch and that means our eyes and our you know just, you know appropriate touch because touch is so broken you know but but something appropriate like you guys did then you want to say it that's number two mm-hmm. use your words say it and you can write it you can text them whatever but then um and letters are great you know that's super but then you uh, you what do you say well words that attach high value words that say man i see something in your life that's really awesome well then number four is special future okay and because of that i wouldn't be surprised margie you're telling her you know you do you know you do such a great job of you know keep you you, i bet you know it doesn't surprise me at all you're such a great mom or you're gonna do or you've you've done such a great job with helping other people or you could be a great teacher or you could be a you're something so the blessing always carried with it God's put something in your life that somebody could use. Because so many of us can't answer that question. Well, why am I here? Exactly. Right? Yeah. And maybe it's because God gave you some gifts you can use to help others. Well, how do you see that? Well, you see it when somebody says it. And then they attach high. You get, you understand, well, boy, maybe, maybe there is something redeeming. Because I wasn't hearing a lot of redeeming things uh, about, about myself, you know, growing up. And uh right. And so, but then that helps them understand for a special future, you know, well, maybe God really can do something with me. And then the last one's genuine commitment. So mm. do we have a time for one more story? Of course. Sure, yeah. Of course. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it, it, I'll, I'll do one story and then one study to kind of, uh, kind of wrap, wrap it type of a deal. But, um, so, uh, it's genuine commitment is the last one. Mm-hmm. So with your touch and your words that attach high value and help them picture a special future, well, the blessing was always then, you know, hey, and so that's a commitment to, I want you to know I'm not bailing out. Now, someday the Lord will take me home, but um, until then, I'm not, I'm not bailing out on you. So there was this great study at UVA. Have you ever been to University of Virginia? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay, it's kind of like Liberty University. Uh, there's several schools where right next to campus is kind of a big high hill. Okay, okay, uh, not a mountain, but it looks like a you know, but it's a big hill. So there was a guy named Prophet that was doing a study, and it was uh, it, it was a cognitive research study. So it wasn't uh, on re- didn't have anything to do with relationships. Right. So what they wanted to do is they would you're walking to school. Hey, you want to be in a clinical study? Here's a pass. You can get out of class. Who doesn't want to be in a clinical study? Oh, yeah, sure. So they would put a 60 pound backpack on you. That's stout. OK, Ranger School, you're carrying around a 65 pound backpack. Yeah, they run run with it all through. Uh, ranger school. So, so that's heavy. Okay. Yeah. 60 pound backpack. And now you're looking up, you've got all the diodes on and you're looking up this hill and everybody that was by themselves. Okay. Everybody that was by themselves, they overshot, they would project. It was a cognitive learning. Like, um, how high is the mountain? How hard is it going to be to climb? And every one yeah. of them overshot. Well, now they look for people walking on campus that were paired up. Yeah. So there's YouTube. Let's say you're dating at UVA, you know, and hey, you guys date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you really like it? Yeah, we yeah, we like it, you know, and so or two roommates, whatever, you know, but they would get somebody that, you know, you're attached to. Okay. Yes. So now they you're you got the backpack on, you've got all the diodes on, but now the next person they put a pack on them. And they put their hand on your shoulder because they're going up the hill with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And every one of them, the mountain shrank. Wow. And then at the University of London, because you're going, eh, University of London replicated the study, except guess what they did? They, you were, you're standing there the second. So the same people that had overshot, they say, well, now 
can you think about who's somebody uh, they would just have them picture mentally, mentally somebody that's going up the hill with you. And if they could picture somebody that would have their hand on their shoulder and was going up the hill with them, the mountain shrank. Wow. Hmm. So that's what I'm getting, man. Our kids are facing mountains, you know, people yeah. in our life are. And yeah. what genuine commitment says is, man, you're, I'm going to, I'm going to be there for you. I'm putting my hand on, on your shoulder. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's kind of the, uh, the key to the whole thing, you know, and, um, you want me to wrap it all up with one story. I can, I can hit all five of them at one story. Yeah. Give, yeah, give us, love that. pull it all together. All together. All right. I, got a, I got a follow-up question or two for you, but I want to hear. Okay. All right. Well, the story, last, yeah. last story is, um, so it's senior year. Okay. Um, you know, my twin brother is super smart. You know, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to graduate. I have to do, it's the mother of all term papers and I have to pass senior English or I'm not going to, I'm I'm not, I'm not, I'm not walking. Right. So, um, and I work really hard on the, te- on the paper. I didn't start till the night before. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm so old. Uh, back then you had typewriters. Yeah. Yes. Remember typewriters had oh, typewriter yeah. ribbon. Okay. You know, so I ran out of, t- so the last two pages I had to hand write. Yeah. So I turned it in, but I thought it was the best paper ever written on the battle of the bulge. And <laughs> I thought they'd publish it probably. It was yeah. such a good paper. <laughs> and I turned it in and did you ever see the movie, the Christmas story? Yes. yes. Remember that with a red writer BB gun? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Out. yeah, yeah. And remember when he's in school and he has to write a theme to the teacher? Yeah. Okay? And um, and in his mind, what is he? What do you see him doing? His mind. Okay. There's the teacher, and she reads it, and she goes up to the board, and she writes A plus 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 plus. plus, plus, plus you know? yeah. <laughs> and the kids are carrying them. That's what I thought would happen. Okay? Right. <laughs> so she hands back all the paper, the teachers, and there's red all over mine, more red, more red. I get to the end and there's a huge D minus. And I still have the paper, but D minus. Wow. Okay. And underneath it, she's written, the only reason I'm passing you is because I don't want to see you next year. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I would have had her again for a senior English. Does that fall, and, does that fall into the kind words with oh, I don't, yeah. category? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm sitting there going, well, I don't want to see you either. You know, oh. they don't just give away D minuses. I'm out of here. And I'm yeah. acting like, you know, it's, well, what am I really thinking? driving home what a pathetic you know loser and i get home so here's how it, the story kind of ends is i get home and mom wants to know hey all right did you get your paper back because grandmother wanted to know you know am i gonna yeah. graduate and um and uh, uh i go ah nah you know i i lost the paper no you didn't sit down and my mom would do the death grip yeah. so watch watch the blessing so have you ever seen a rheumatoid's hands uh, rheumatoid arthritis, you know, they get really it. twisted up, you know, yeah. so she, so she, she would take your hand. We hated it because she would, you, if she held your hand, you had to sit right there and talk with her. Yeah. And if you tried to pull away, it would twist her wrist and she'd cry. Uh, oh, so wow. you could, you, we called it the death grip. You know, I go, not the death grip. Yeah. Come on, hold my hand. Come on. Cause I would bail out, you know? So, yeah. she, so she makes me hold her hand and then she goes, look at me look at me made me look her right in the eye she had beautiful blue kind of gunmetal blue steel gray blue eyes you know and um she goes look at me and and so she she goes you know and she looks through all the paper and then she goes look at me she goes i don't care what that teacher said you do such a good job of using words i wouldn't be surprised if god used you someday to help other people with your words Oh. Now think about that. There's appropriate touch. There's those mm-hmm. spoken words that attach high value. I wasn't seeing it from my teacher. It was there in writing. You're a pathetic loser. You know, I don't yeah. want to see you next year. But, you know, she's pointing out a special future. I wouldn't be surprised if God used you. And then, you know, till the day she died, you know, she was there for us. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what we want to do. You know, they're super small things. Um, but man, just, uh, how powerful to begin to, uh, say, okay, even if I didn't get this, I can choose to give it. Yeah. Okay. And, and, uh, man, we can make a big difference if we start doing that. 
That's that is so what beautiful. A great story. Just, just out of curiosity, did your mother stay with us long enough for her to see your books and the work that you've done? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, the, certainly this first, but the first book that I did was, uh, the guy named Gary Smalley, great friend I worked with for 10 years. And, uh, so she got, she got to see that book. Yeah. So she's been yeah. gone for a, a good while, but, um, but, uh, no, yeah, she, we were blessed. Uh, she, you know, you know, you gotta take, you know, she, she would struggled with all of the medications and stuff. So she oh, yeah. went too early, but, but still, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, you bet. But she was proud of all of us. Uh, awesome. You know, when she died, have you ever, you ever had to do that? Somebody dies and you've got to be the one to pack up everything. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so here's this bookshelf in her little condo thing. And there's on one shelf is a bunch of medical and genetics books. And then there's a bunch of counseling books and, and then, um, and then there's a bunch of heavy equipment digest and <laughs> she had three your brother. Yeah. So yeah. she, my, she took a beginning genetic genetics course. My brother's a MD PhD yeah. and, um, in genetics and, and then my books. So she had those, but then also, you know, how many 73 year old arthritic women when they died were paid up subscriptions to heavy equipment died yet? You know, <laughs> so she was pretty awesome. great at looking at all of us. Your heavy equipment operator, that's awesome, yeah, because it was for Joe, right. he was really good at it. But you know, you're you know, geneticists, fine, you want to work with couples, fine, but you know, what is it about them that God could use? So she was great at affirming that, yeah, I love it. So this leads me into my follow-up question. By the way, what a what a sweet angel. Um, you know, just M- Margie and I have both. Uh, my dad is still alive, but uh, cool. my mother passed away. Margie's both of her folks have passed away, and okay, and we've been that through that. And there's um, there's there's a lot there we could unpack, but yeah, I I, I have, you know follow-up question I have to all this is we live. Um, we live in a really distracted world. I mean, there's all the social media and the news and the constant bombardment of advertisers and, and uh, you know, all the different stuff that goes on. Not only that, but, you know, like you said, like, you know, back in the day when you guys were taking care of yourself, people would be arrested now. And so there's a lot more yeah. oversight and regulations. There's a lot more complexities in society. And, and my question really is, is what have you seen is helpful for individuals to to allow them to slow down and to start to see people through this lens, through the lens of the blessing. Because, you know, I think that some people might say, "Well, I, I know how to hold somebody's hand. I can look them in the eye, but then how do I how do I actually see what their potential is? How do I speak these words that are that are yeah. you know special future?" I wonder what your thoughts are in terms of helping individuals. You know, they want something, but they don't know how to do it. Yeah. No. Uh, that's a, you know that's really good because um it, it is water has a hard time rising above its level uh, there's yeah. no three ways about it you know yeah. and if you've never seen it but the part that amazes me is like i'll walk through those five things and again i'm on a military base i'm speaking at prince engineering you're talking on attachment you may or may not ever use a verse depending on the group do you know oh, what yeah. i mean mm-hmm. uh, but it's 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 just you know core basic how do you walk well with people and it is amazing it's like well that's that's what they need so much it's not for a lot of people once they hear it they're going well that's just almost too easy yeah (laughs) i mean what blocks them is as well they don't really need to hear it oh really you know well then somebody just somebody else will tell them stuff about them that pulls them away from you being the one to tell them, you know, mm-hmm. and, and so much of it, it isn't so much that it's missile science, you know, right. it's really more uh, just challenging them just to, just to give it a shot. Um, yeah. I was just with a, a fireman uh, out here in Phoenix, you know, and great guy, but, but, you know, he's, he's, just was struggling with kind of the whole commitment, you know, and his kids and everything. And so I'm coaching him. And one of the things I had him do is sit down and uh, just, just give the blessing to his, to his son. So he's got like a 10 year old boy. 
Yeah. And, and I get him to write it out. He got, he's got it all, you know, and he's going, eh, you know, he knows I just, just do it, just try it. Okay. Yeah. And so he's sitting there with him and he said his backs up, both of them, they were sitting in the hall uh, and they both had their backs against the wall. And he goes, Hey, I just want to tell you something. He reads him this blessing and his son starts crying. He's 10. Wow. And he's going, what's wrong? And he goes, he goes, that, is that really how you feel about me? Oh. And then he starts crying and going, well, wait, you know, it is. And he goes, no, I don't. don't. No. I mean, we just assume it. And yeah. Think, you know, proximity has nothing to do with attachment. That's right. You, know, you may, you got to make a choice to say it. So, you know, I mean, we do it. We had a whole, they can get the book, the blessing. They can go to strongfamilies.com. We have courses they can take on how do you bless, or if you didn't get it, how can you reverse things? All that's fine. You know, there's tons of stuff out there in attachment. Um, but, but, you know, but biblically, and then just in pr practical terms for so many of us, why we're not doing it is because we never got it. That's mm -hmm. right. And then they're going to watch your show today, you know, <laughs> and go, okay, I, I'm just going to try it. Just okay, try it. My wife and I are strained out and I'm going to set the timer uh, for two minutes, you know, and we're just going to look in each other's eyes for two minutes. Hey, I wrestled in college. One minute is forever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So two minutes is a really long time. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm telling you, just try that. Just start there. Yeah. You know, and, and then get that relationship going and then start, you know, loving on those kids that are there and then reach out to some other people that need the blessing as well. I love it. It's Absolutely. So I, I had two thoughts come to my mind. One was... <laughs> You, know, you talked about this, the simplicity of it. And I'm reminded of the experience of Moses in the wilderness and all the, the children yeah. will get bitten by the serpents, right? The yeah. All they had to do was and, look. And all they had, they had to do was look. look. It was that simple, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I'm telling you, John, this is what you're doing. You know, you you yeah. are, uh, I don't want to make it sound like I'm comparing you exactly to Moses, but you've thought of this idea. You've got this direction from the Lord, this blessing idea, and it's so powerful. It's so simple. and I. Everyone listening to this, I just, I just, you know, strongly encourage you, invite, entice, you know, it, just try this because yeah. it's, it's obviously so powerful and impactful. Very cool. Yeah. I was just with a couple of guys and we're, we're working. It's, it's a process. I mean, I'll probably uh, be gone when it happens. It's such a long process, but we're actually launching next year on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, a national blessing day. Oh, wow. you know, and what it is is picture two chairs, you know, and it's a dad and a son and they, they, you know, the dad's blessing the son or it could be the mom. It doesn't, but somebody, you know, in this case, and then you've got like 20 kids looking on. Yeah. Okay. Young kids. They're watching yeah. somebody else's dad bless them. Right. Yeah. Well, then the curtain falls and there's 20 chairs up there and their parents are up there. Nice. Mm -hmm or their mom or their grandparent, yeah. whoever they're doing life with. Right. And they're beckoning them up and they run up there and sit mm -hmm. in the chair. And, um, but that's man, who do you need to sit in the chair and bless? Yeah. So, um, so you never know. One of these days there might end up being a national blessing day. That's what we're working <laughs> on. Well, count us in. We'll, we'll participate. We'll, we'll, we'll promote. We'll, yes. we're supporting. <laughs> All right. We got that's our good. vote on. So, so uh, everyone listening, I, I, uh, First of all, I want to say thank you to John. Mm -hmm. This has just been absolutely incredible. We really appreciate your time. Uh, the second thing is I want to strongly encourage you. I mean, go to Strong Families, strongfamilies.com, right? Or .org. Yeah, yeah. Dot .com. Mm -hmm. dot .com, yeah. And, uh, and get the book, The Blessing, and you know, dive dive into this. This is really powerful. I can say from first, I mean, this is the first time that I've been exposed to The Blessing, John. But mm -hmm. I can tell you as I'm thinking about it, like, oh, my goodness, like critical turning points in my life happened when somebody did this for me. Yeah. And you've been probably doing it with your kids. Just yes. don't, not, not maybe calling it that or something. Yeah. You know that I mean? sure. uh, yeah. yeah. But, but giving but, it a framework yeah. is so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I had one other thought and then we'll wrap up, but I, uh, about a year, two years ago, I read this study that showed that the benefits of a hug, the endorphins that are released from the attachment of a physical hug happen after 20 seconds. You know, yeah. thinking about this, this looking in each other's eyes. 
And so I decided, I'm like, okay, I'm going to start hugging my children longer. Mm-hmm. And, at first, <laughs> and at first, they were like, it was uncomfortable. Okay, that's enough, dad. That's yeah. Enough. I know. <laughs> but now I'll tell you what. My children are the world's greatest huggers. They yeah, they yeah. just love a long hug from dad. Yeah. And uh, and you know it's I'm gonna I'm gonna start looking them in the eyes now. Yeah, yeah, that, right? Looking in the eye and then just doing yeah. the just yes, yes. brighten your eyes. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's just it's just yeah. crazy how you think that's um it's such a small thing, but but it, it just, you know, oh my gosh. Right you know, Marge's, love, the, Marge's the best. Is. You see Marge, look at that. Like that. Yeah, yeah. When I, yeah, when I come, when I come yeah. in the door, it, it doesn't matter where I've been. Margie comes at a fast trot and her eyes light up and she gives me a big well, yeah. hug. And hey, love me. moves at the speed of joy. Yeah, and when somebody looks at you in with joy, oh my gosh, yeah. looks who, look who's here. Uh, so that's that's huge. So, right. well, yeah. proud of both of you. Keep, keep well, going. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you very, very much. Thank you for and God bless you and your work, yeah. ministry. It's just incredible what you're doing. We really, really appreciate all that you're all right, doing. Well, I'll, we'll get Carrie, our oldest daughter, on with you guys sometime, or both of us will join you again. That'd be yes, awesome. we, we would love, love that. that. Yes. Absolutely. So. Please do. All right. Thanks a lot so much, John. All we'll right. take care. Have a good all day. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.